فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم For this reason the companions really differed regarding the exegesis of the Quran This difference occurred more in the time of their students the tabi'un but was still considerably less when compared to later generations In short the more noble a generation was the more profound their knowledge understanding and unity ولهذا كان النزاع بين الصحابة في تفسير القرآن قليلا جدا وهو وإن كان في التابعين أكثر منه في الصحابة فهو قليل بالنسبة إلى من بعدهم وكلما كان العصر أشرف كان الاجتماع والائتلاف والعلم والبيان فيه أكثر Now we move on to the fourth point He clarifies here Ibn Taymiyyah and then niza that the disputes and the arguments between the sahabati fi tafsiri the disputes and the arguments uh, between the companions uh, regarding the exegesis qalilun jidda it was very little wa inma kanu ala dhalika and the reason for that was not what lannahum shahidu tanzil wa arafu tawil there are two things we didn't have they they saw that the revelation come down and they understood the interpretation fahum kanu ashab for whom they were Ashaban lin Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam They were companions of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam When the Quran was coming down They saw for fa'arafu mawaqa'ah wa makharijah They knew where it came down And the incidents that it came down on The situation that it came down on So their understanding was greater and stronger And it is better than anyone who came after them regarding it Walidhalik ibn Taymiyyah gives you a qa'idah Which a student of knowledge needs to memorize Memorize if they don't memorize this book but just this principle alone it is it, is enough for a person to memorize which is kullama kana al-asru ashrafa every time a generation is noble and great kana al-ijtima'u wal i'tilaf wal 'ilm wal bayan fihi akthar the unity wal 'ilm and the knowledge and the clarification is greater and however whenever a nation or a people are noble and they're good then the unity is there for them. So first of all, when the people are good. And now we ask ourselves, why has the companions, their disputes and arguments, didn't get in between their unity? They didn't get between their unity. Why is it that? They disputed, they argued on issues. Ma'adalika, the ijtima and the ittilaf was present amongst them. It was present amongst them. The reason for this يَرْجِعُ إِلَىٰ أَمْرَانِ It goes back to two things. First one was سَلَامَةُ الْقَلْبِ الْمُدْرَكِ Sorry, سَلَامَةُ الْقَلْبِ سَلَامَةُ الْقُلُوبِ الْمُدْرِكَةِ وَصِحَّةُ الْعُلُومِ الْمُدْرَكَةِ The first one is their hearts were pure. The heart which was understanding the exegesis of the Qur'an was a pure, clean heart. Their hearts were empty from al-ghish wa dagal wa al-hasad. They didn't have all of that in their hearts. They also didn't have in their hearts what preconceived notion. They were not يَعْتَقِدُونَ ثُمَّ يَسْتَدِلُونَ فَيَضِلُونَ. They were not believing something before the verse came, and having a preconceived notion that was getting in their way to accept what the Quran is saying. They weren't like that. They actually looked for the answers in the Quran. So that was the first reason. سَلَامَةُ الْقُلُوبِ الْمُدْرِكَةِ Their heart was pure. There was, no, there was no hate, jealousy, envy. There was none of that in their hearts. They also had no pre- preconceived notion. So when the evidence came to them and it reached them, they were so happy and they were so excited to take the ruling from the verse. You with me? In other words, their heart was empty from two things. Two illnesses which destroy the heart. Which is istila amradu shubuhati wa shahawat. There was no shubha in their hearts and there was no shahwa in their hearts. And this is the path that many deviated groups fell into. The second reason is because sihatul ulum al mudraka. The knowledges which they had was knowledge which was clean. The knowledge which they had was clean. They were not busy with philosophy, ilmul kalam, and whatnot. Their ulum was ilm safi, clean and pure. And also their understanding was also pure. 
their understanding was greater than the understanding of those who came after. Because of the fact, as I mentioned, they were there when the revelation came down. They saw it with their two eyes. They knew فَعَرَفُوا مَوَاقِعَ وَمَخَارِجَةً They knew the places it came down and on the situations in which it came down on. And that's why Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali wrote a book called Fadl ilm al-Salafi ala ilm al-Khalaf The virtue of the knowledge of the Salaf over the knowledge of the Khalaf. They were, they, they're better. Now. The point here is that the Tabi'un studied the exegesis of the Qur'an from the companions just as they took from them the prophetic sunnah. They would also comment on the Qur'an using their deductions, basing them on other evidences, just as they did with the hadiths of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. والمقصود أن التابعين تلقوا التفسير عن الصحابة كما تلقوا عنهم علم السنة وإن كانوا قد يتكلمون في بعض ذلك بالاستنباط والاستدلال كما يتكلمون في بعض السنن بالاستنباط والاستدلال This is the fifth one which is the last one for the first chapter The Sheikh Rahimah Allah mentions that the tabi'een Tabi'een are who? The students of the sahabas they talaqaw tafsira, they took the exegesis an is sahabat from the companions kama talaqaw anhum ilm sunnah the way they took the sunnah from them this is a senad this is a chain the knowledge is what? taken from one generation takes it from another generation takes it from another generation takes it from another generation and that's why uh, Muhammad ibn Sirin said inna hadha al-ilm deenun fanzur amman ta'khuduna deenakum Abdullah ibn Mubarak said, Al-Isnadu min al-Dini. Walaw al-Isnadu laqala man sha'a man sha'a. What saves this religion and protects this religion is chain of narration. He says, if it wasn't for the chain of narration, Abdullah ibn Mubarak, everybody would have said whatever they wanted. Somebody would have just come to there and said, the Prophet did this. Like, who could stop him? But we're going to ask him, where is your chain for this? Are you with me? Where did you get this from? Give us your chain. Give us your senate. So they took the tafsir from the companions. Are you with me? They took the tafsir from the companions. The companions took it from who? The Prophet. How did they take it from the Prophet? Tafsir, which is the bayan, which is khas, or the bayan, which is am. The two types of tafsir that the Prophet ﷺ did, right? They were there and they saw it and they took it from him. The sahabas. The tabi'in came and they took it from the companions. And from those who took from the companions directly was Mujahid ibn Jabrin. Mujahid radiallahu anhu, where did he say? Aradtu al-mushaf ala ibn Abbas. Thalathu aradat. Mujahid ibn Jabrin, where did he say? He said, I opened the Mus'haf three times. From the beginning to the end. Every verse I will stop him. And I say, what's this verse? What's this verse? What's this verse? It's Ibn Abbas. So Mujahid actually took the first type of tafsir, which was what? Bayan khas. Which was what? Word for word. He took it from Ibn Abbas. Word for word. Another one is Abu Jawza. Abu Jawza. What did he say? Jawart Ibn Abbas. I was a neighbor of Ibn Abbas for 12 years. Uh, and he said, I took the tafsir from him, all of it. That's another tabi'i. So the tabi'in, they took the tafsir from the sahabas, directly from the uh, sahabas. Just the same way they took the sunnah from them. The same way they took the sunnah from the sahabas. But there's something else which he mentions. But they did something else. They also, they also done istimbatat, they came out with deductions. The Tabi'een, they came out with deductions. The reason for that was because what was found at their time, the, the need called for it, al hajjatu da'iyatun ilayhi, the situation that they were in called for that. Because things happened at the time of the Tabi'een, min al waqa'i' wal hawadith, wal iftiraq, divisions, um, matters took place at that time, lam yakun fi zaman sahabati that didn't happen at the time of the Sahaba. فَتَكَلَّمَ مَنْ تَكَلَّمَ مِنَ التَّابِعِينَ So they were forced to speak about this issue. Are you with me? They had to speak about these issues. لَمْ يَتَكَلَّمْ بِهِ الصَّحَابَةِ The Sahabas didn't speak about in the tafsir of the Qur'an. Are you with me? And are you with me, brothers? But the way they spoke about it, pay attention, was that the Sahabas placed those ayats when they were commenting on it. The, the, the tafsir of the Sahabas was a general tafsir. Are you with me? But when the Tabi'een came and the groups came, their matter became placing on groups now. Because those groups, were some, majority of them were not present at the time of the, 
the Sahabas, they came after the Sahabas. So the tanzil and the placing is what the, tab the Tabi'in did because of the things that came at their time. So now we finished the first chapter. We're now going to move, inshallah, inshallah ta'ala, to the uh, second chapter, bi'idhnillahi uh, al-kareem. Faslun. في اختلاف السلف في التفسير وأنه, وأنه اختلاف تنوع والخلاف بين سلف في التفسير قليل وخلافهم في الأحكام أكثر من خلافهم في التفسير وغالب ما يصح عنهم من الخلاف يرجع إلى اختلاف تنوع لاختلاف تضاد وذلك صنفان أحدهما أن يعبر كل واحد منهم عن المراد بعبارة غير عبارة صاحبه تدل على معنى في المسمى غير المعنى الآخر مع اتحاد المسمى بمنزلة الأسماء المتكافئة التي بين المترادفة والمتباينة وذلك مثل أسماء الله الحسنى وأسماء رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وأسماء القرآن فإن أسماء, فإن أسماء الله كلها تدل على مسمى واحد السنف الثاني أن يذكر, أن يذكر, أن يذكر كل منهم من الإسم العام بعض أنواعه على سبيل التمثيل والتنبيه المستمع على النوع لا على سبيل الحد المطابق للمحدود في عمومه وخصوصه وقد يجئ وقد يجئ كثيرا وقد يجئ وقد يجئ كثيرا من هذا الباب قولهم هذه الآية نزلت في كذا لا سيما إن كان المذكور شخصا كأسباب كأسباب النزول المذكورة في التفسير ومعرفة سبب النزول تعين على فهم الآية فإن العلم بالسبب يورث, يورث العلم بالمسبب وقولهم نزلت هذه الآية في كذا يراد به تارة أنه سبب النزول ويراد به تارة أن هذا داخل في الآية وإن لم يكن السبب كما تقول عنا بهذه الآية كذا وإذا عرف هذا فقول أحدهم نزلت في كذا لا ينافي قول الآخر نزلت في كذا إذا كان اللفظ يتناولهما كما, كما ذكرناه في التفسير بالمثال وإذا ذكر أحدهم لها سببا نزلت لأجله وذكر الآخر سببا فقد يمكن صدقهما بأن, بأن تكون نزلت عقب تلك الأسباب أو تكون نزلت مرتين مرة لهذا السبب ومرة لهذا السبب وهذان الصنفان اللذان ذكرناهما في التنوع في في التنوع التفسير هما الغالب في التفسير سلف الأمة الذي هما الغالب في تفسير سلف الأمة هما الغالب في تفسير السلف الأمة الذي يظن أنه مختلف ومن ومن التنازع ومن التنازع ومن ومن التنازع الموجود عنهم ما يكون اللفظ فيه محتملا للأمرين إما لكونه مشتركا في اللغة كاللفظ قس قسورة كلفظ القس فلفظ قسورة كلفظ قسورة الذي يراد به الرامي ويراد به الأسد واللفظ عسعس الذي يراد به إقبال الليل وإدباره وإما لكونه متواطئا في الأصل لكن المراد به أحد النوعين أو أحد الشيئين كالضمائر في قوله ثم دنا فتدلى فكان, فكان قاب قس قوسين أو أدنا وكاللفظ والفجر وليال وكاللفظ والفجر وليال عشر والشفع والوتر 
وما أشبه ذلك فمثل هذا قد يراد به كل المعاني التي قالها السلف وقد لا يجوز ذلك من يميد والفجر يسير يسير والفجر لون فوق القلة ده والفجر والوتر وتر السكون عليه ومن الأقوال ومن الأقوال الموجودة عنهم ويجعله ويجعلها بعض بعض الناس اختلافا أن يعبروا عن المعاني بألفاظ متقاربة لا مترادفة مترادفة فإن فإن الترادف في اللغة ترادف فإن ترادف في اللغة قليل وأما في 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 ألفاظ القرآن فإما نادر وإما معدوم وقل أن يعبر عن لفظ واحد بلفظ واحد يؤدي جميع معناها معناه بل يكون فيه تقريب لمعناه وهذا من أسباب إعجاز القرآن ومن ومن هنا غلط من جعل بعض الحروف تقوم مقام بعض وتحقيق ما قاله نحاة البصرة من من التضمين وجمع وجمع إبارات السلف سلف في مثل هذا نافع جدا لأن مجموع عباراتهم أدل على المقصود من عبارة أو عبارتين ومع هذا فلا بد من اختلاف محقق محقق بينه بينهم كما يوجد مثل ذلك في الأحكام. Chapter Differences of opinion amongst the predecessors in the exegesis of the Quran, a difference of variation. The predecessors differed little in the exegesis of the Quran. However, they differed considerably more in issues related to rulings, ahkam. Whenever they do differ in the exegesis of the Quran, it is more a difference of variation than contradiction. This is of two categories. The first, the expression of one and the same idea by using different words, such as them referring to the same concept by one mentioning a particular aspect concerning it and the other mentioning another aspect. These explanations are like using equivalent names which lie between synonyms and antonyms. Similar to this are the names of Allah, the names of the Prophet wasallam, and the names of the Qur'an. The names of Allah all refer to Him, the Most High. The second category, to mention by way of example and illustration some aspects of the general term being referred to in order to draw the attention of the listener to the type of thing that is being referred to and not to completely define the boundaries of the word. From this category is also the statement, the reason this verse was revealed was due to such and such, especially if it was due to a person. This is the case with the background regarding the revelation of certain verses. Knowledge of the reasons for which a verse was revealed assists one in understanding that verse, for knowledge of the cause helps to bring out knowledge of the result. Their statement, this verse was revealed due to such and such, can sometimes mean that this was the reason the verse was revealed. It can also imply that this meaning is also present in the verse, even if it is not the reason for its revelation i.e. the meaning of this verse is such and such. If this is known and one states this verse was revealed due to, the, due to this, this does not contradict a similar statement from someone else, so long as the word can include both meanings, as you have explained when discussing tafsir by way of example. Likewise, if one mentions a reason for which the verse was revealed and then mentions a different reason, it is possible that both are speaking the truth and that the verse was revealed after a number of incidents took place, or the verse was revealed twice on each occasion for a different reason. These two different categories of tafsir which we have just mentioned, variation in names and attributes or different categories and types with which they are described such as illustrations, are the two most predominant types of tafsir found amongst the predecessors which may be thought of as differences in opinion. Another type of difference which can be found is where we have ambiguous words. This can be done in two ways. Firstly, it is ambiguous because it has a number of meanings in the language such as the word qaswara which can refer to a shooter or a lion, and the word as'asa, which can refer to both the advent and departure of the night. 
The second way it can be ambiguous is because even though the word originally only has one meaning, it denotes one of two different types or one of two things, such as a pronominal, pronominal subject, which at times can refer to a number of things, like in the verse, then he approached and descended, and was at a distance of two bow lengths or nearer. Surah Al-Najm, Ayah 8 to 9. Other similar words include al-fajr, the daybreak, al-shafr, the even, al-watr, the odd, and layalin ashr, the ten nights. It is possible that these words have the meanings the salaf gave to them, or their meanings could be otherwise. Another statement of theirs which is commonly thought to be a difference of opinion is when they express an opinion each using a different choice of words. These words are similar in their connotations but not synonymous. There are very few words in the Arabic language which are synonymous. This is even rarer in the Qur'an, if not non-existent. It is rare to express the exact same meaning using two sets of words. At best, the meanings will be approximate. This is from the miracles of the Qur'an. From here, we can see the mistake made by those who substitute certain words with others. The correct opinion is that of the grammarians of the Basra school, who state that it is a case of implication. To gather these varying sayings and opinions of the Salaf is very beneficial. By gathering all these opinions, one will have a clearer understanding of the intended meaning, much more so than if he was just to collect a saying or two. To gather these varying sayings and opinions of the Salaf is very beneficial. By gathering all these opinions, one will have a clearer understanding of the intended meaning, much more so than if he were just to collect a saying or two. Even with all of the above, there exist genuine differences of opinion amongst the Salaf, such as their differences in matters of jurisprudence. Here, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, he clarifies after he has told us previously in the previous chapter that when he said that the khilaf amongst the Sahabas, وَلِهَذَا كَانَ النِّزَاعُ بَيْنَ الصَّحَابَةِ فِي التَّفْسِيرِ فِي تَفْسِيرِ الْقُرْآنِ قَلِيلًا جِدًّا وهو وإن كان في التابعين أكثر منه في الصحابة فهو قليل بالنسبة إلى من بعدهم. He tells us that the khilaf in the tafsir between the sahaba and the tabi'een <coughs> that is more in the tabi'een than it is found in the sahaba. He already told us that. But now he wants to tell us even the ones that we find within the sahabas. So question is, is which khilaf is more? <coughs> The khilaf of the sahabas fima bainahum between themselves in tafsir of the Qur'an or the khilaf between the tabi'in, which one's more? The khilaf between the tabi'in is more. But then now Ibn Taym is going back to tell you in this chapter that the khilaf that you find, the khilaf that you find <coughs> at the salaf, including the sahabas and the tabi'in, majority of them is, I mean the overwhelming of it, overwhelming khilafat is Something that is known as اختلاف التنوع لا اختلاف التضاد لا اختلاف التضاد The majority of the khilaf amongst the sahabas is known as اختلاف التنوع اختلاف التنوع means ما يمكن فيه صحة المعنيين معا It's something which you can say both meanings are correct Meaning there's a way to reconcile between the two statements And we'll look more into that how many types there are from the اختلاف التنوع are you with me? We're going to see that. But the اختلاف التنوع means the two statements are both statements which you can say they are right. So they're not contradicting themselves. They, they can be reconciled and they are heading towards the same direction. وَأَمَّا اختلافُ التَّبَادِ As for اختلافُ التَّبَادِ فَيَمْتَنِعُ صِحَتُهُمَا مَعَنْ You can't say both of them are right. You can't say both of them are right. In other words, whatever meaning you, you said here, the meaning that's being stated here is totally and utterly different from the other meaning. That's what اختلاف التباد means. Then the author mentioned. Now. The predecessors differed little in the exegesis of the Quran. However, they differed considerably more in issues related to rulings ahkam. Whenever they do differ in the exegesis of the Quran, it is more a difference of variation than contradiction. This is of two categories. والخلاف بين سلف في التفسير قليل وخلافهم في الأحكام أكثر من خلافهم في التفسير 
غالب ما يصح عنهم من الخلاف يرجع إلى اختلاف تنوع لاختلاف تضاد وذلك الصنفان هي ذا الشيخ رحمه الله تنس تلز أس أن الخلاف الذي جرى بينهم في التفسير that the disputes, the difference of opinion that came between the uh, the uh, Salaf of this Ummah, the pious predecessors, the khilaf that came between them is little, very little. Fit the tafsiri in the exegesis. Wa khilaf wa fil ahkam, but their difference of opinion in jurisprudent rulings, in hukum, afiqiyat, matters which are amaliyat, it was more in number. Akthar min khilafihim fit tafsir. So they have more difference of opinion in regards to matters which are fiqh, then they have difference of opinions in matters pertaining to tafsir. وَغَالِبُ مَا يَسْحُ عَنْهُمْ مِنَ الْخِلَافِ And then he tells us, Ibn Taymiyyah, that the majority of the khilaf that have come from the correctly and authentically, it goes back to اِخْتِلَافُ تَنَوْعِ الْاخْتِلَافِ الطَّبَاتِ So you need to know that. So pay attention. So the khilaf between the sahabas, uh, between themselves, in tafsir is more is 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 less sorry than that khilaf the differences in which they had in regards to ahkam jurisprudent rulings and the difference of opinions which they had in mat the, uh, in matters of uh, tafsir and exegesis was ikhtilaf tanawwu'in la ikhtilaf tadad and then the author rahimahullah what he's now going to say is the the ikhtilaf tanawwu' In tafsir, ila it goes to two fundamental reasons, two underlining reasons. He's going to now tell us that الاختلاف بينهم, the, the اختلاف of the differences of exegesis between them, ila aslaini, it goes back to two. He's going to now tell us in the second point. So now we've taken the first point. This, this chapter, it has 13 points. How many points does it have? 13 points. So we've now taken the first point. We're now moving on to the second point. Now, The first, the expression of one and the same idea by using different words, such as them referring to the same concept by one mentioning a particular aspect concerning it and the other mentioning another aspect. These explanations are like using equivalent names which lie between synonyms and antonyms. Similar to this are the names of Allah, the names of the Prophet وسلم, and the names of the Qur'an. The names of Allah all refer to Him, the Most High. أَحَدُهُمَا أَنْ يُعَبِّرَ كُلُّ وَاحِدٍ مِنْهُمْ عَنِ الْمُرَادِ بِعِبَارَةٍ غَيْرِ عِبَارَةِ صَاحِبِهِ تَدُلُّ عَلَى مَعْنًا فِي الْمُسَمَّى غَيْرِ الْمَعْنَى الْآخَرِ مع اتحاد المسمى بمنزلة الأسماء المتكافعة التي بين المترادفة والمتباينة وذلك مثل أسماء الله الحسنى وأسماء رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وأسماء القرآن فإن أسماء الله كلها تدل على مسمى واحد The Sheikh here now mentions the first reason the first أصل of which اختلاف التنوع in tafsir goes back to. The first one is أن يعبر كل واحد منهم Each and every one of them uses a term other than the term that was used by the other one. Are you with me? But they're all indicating the same that. They're speaking about the same thing. Everyone is choosing to use different descriptions and attributes of that thing. It shows one thing, but You don't find that in the what? You don't find that. So everybody is explaining that and talking about the same thing, but everybody chooses what? Pay attention. Chooses a different word. Are you with me, brothers? But each one, the word that they've chosen has a meaning that's not in the other one's wording. Okay? So both of them are talking about the same that they've taken different wordings and the meanings that are in the wordings are different. So they're differing in the wording and they're differing in the meaning, but they're not differing in the thing that they're talking about. Okay, that's why the Sheikh says, What does it mean, Al-Asma'a Al-Mutakafi'a? Asma'a Al-Mutakafi'a means what? It's anything that comes together 
in the thing that they are talking about, in the essence that they are talking about, is the same. But they differ in what? The attributes and the characteristics of this thing. And that's exactly the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah's names. Somebody comes up to you and says to you, for example, he says to you, uh, Ar-Rahman. Another one comes up to you and says to you, Al-Aziz. Ar-Rahman and Al-Aziz, are they both Allah? Are they both talking about two God, different gods? No, they're both talking about what? One that, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. But what have, they, what have they differed upon? The wording. Each one is taking a different wording. But they've also differed in the meaning. Because in the meaning of Ar-Rahman is not what's in the meaning of Al-Aziz. Ar-Rahman means ذُو الرَّحْمَةِ الْوَاسِعَةِ صح? And Al-Aziz means Al-Ghalibu fi amrihi. Ar-Rahman means one who's merciful. And Al-Aziz is the one who wants something and it will happen in accordance to how he wants it, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are you with me? That's the first type, he says. And يُعَبِّرَ كُلُّ وَاحِدٍ مِّنْهُمْ That each one would use عَنِ الْمُرَادِ بِعِبَارَةٍ غَيْرِ عِبَارَةِ صَاحِبِهِ تَدُلُّ عَلَى مَعْنًا وَاحِدٍ They're showing one meaning and one essence here. But they're not showing the same meaning and the same wording is not being used here. Are you with me? This type, are you with me? This type, which is, the first, how many types did we say اختلاف وتنوعين goes back to? We said two. We've met, explained the first one right right now. صح? That has three categories that come out of it. وهذا الصنف الأول, the first type, من اختلاف التنوعين له ثلاثة أنواع. It has three types. The first one is, are you with me? It is describing the word, describing the word, تفسير الكلمة بمعناها الذي وضعت له الشرعا أو لغة you're going back to you're using this and you're explaining this with a word that the sharia has used or the language has used don't worry an example will come the first one is تفسير الكلمة you describe the word بمعناها الذي وضعت له شرعا أو لغة by a term coined and done by the Sharia. The Sharia used it. So you use your, you're going according to what the Sharia already said about it, or the language that's already been said by it. The second one is, are you with me? Tafsirul al kalimah. You describe the word, are you with me? Or you do tafsir of the word, bima'na alladhi tadammanatu. That which it consists of it. That which it consists of it. Last but not least, Tafsirul Kalima, describing the word Bima'na Lazim Lamanahu Levi Wudi Atilahu. You're describing this word based on that which necessitates from it. And that's the three Dalalat that we always speak about. Dalalatu, the Dalalat al the three types Dalalatul Mutabaka, Dalalatul Tadamun, and Dalalatul Iltizam. Sah? We give, we give examples always for a house, for instance. A house, when you say it, you will think automatically doors. You know, you will think of uh, rooms. You will think of a kitchen. You will think of a toilet. You will think of rooms, a living room, a sleep. All of that is dalalatul mudabak. It's what the word has been placed to have all of that in it. In it. Dalalatul tadamuni is when you take a portion of that house. For example, if you say door, if you say a room, that's dalalatul tadamuni. Dalalut al tizam is basically if there's a house, if there's doors, if there's locks, if there's kitchen, if there's toilet, then that means somebody must have made it. So what happens here is that when the tafsir is being done, one would take the dalalat al mutabaqah, one would take the dalalat al tadamuni, and one would take the dalalat al iltizam. Let's give an example of that. Umuthila dalika bi tafsir sirat al mustaqim. The word sirat al mustaqim. They have come three tafsir from the Salaf. Some said it means Al-Islam. That's Dalalatul Mutabaqa, which is the first type. It's using the word for what the Sharia placed for it. Are you with me? How has the Sharia placed this word? Based on the hadith of Nawas ibn Sam'an. Nawas ibn Sam'an narrated it in Hasanin. And it's a hadith which is very long. 
The Prophet said, what did he say? As-sirat al-Islam, صح? The Prophet said that. Are you with me, brothers? So this is Dalalat al-Mutabaqa. The Prophet statement, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is set and it's placed. So it is tafsir al-kalimati bima'anaha al-lazhi wudha'at lahu shara'atan aw lughatan, صح? Here, Sharia placed this well and he gave it a meaning. Are you with me? The Dalalat al-Tadammuni means to say tariq al-Ubudiyya, the path to servitude. That is tafsir al-kalima bima'ana al-ladhi tadammanatu. That's it describing and explaining the word, meaning that it consists of. Sahih? Islam consists of many things. Ibadah is one of it. Are you with me? That it consists of. It has mu'amalat. It has other things that it consists of. The third one, which is that the someone said, is that the Sirat al Mustaqim, that's the Quran. Are you with me? And that's bima'na al lazim in the ma'na lady wudi at lahu. And it's a ma'na al lazim because if we say that the Quran is the Prophet explained to be Islam, Islam can't exist without a without a Quran. It necessitates that there's a Quran in place. So religion is taken from Allah ta'ala biwasita through a means and a way. Are you with me? Islam's rulings don't become clear illa bihad al kitab, sah? So this, from the two types of ikhtilaf al which is what the author mentions here, what was the first one he says? And you abira kullu wahidi minhum anil muradi bi ibarati gayri ibarati sahibihi. This we said three come out of it. Three meanings are actually what come out of it. Naam.